When the albumin print was invented in 1850, they then called salted paper prints plain prints. The only difference is one has egg white and one does not. It's the same process. So these are examples of albumin prints. The albumin print was invented in 1850 by Louis Desiree Blancart Evrard and was the most popular photographic process in the 19th century. This is an example of a pristine albumin print, how it would have looked when it was first produced. This is an example of a faded yellowed albumin print, characteristic of albumin deterioration. The albumin print is a silver chloride process. It's, it uses table salt as, as part of its process. All it is is paper that's been floated on a solution of albumin, egg white. The earliest albumin printing operations literally kept a lot of chickens because it took a lot of eggs to make a lot of albumin print. You, you take eggs and you separate the white from the yolk. You beat the white, and when it settles back down again, you have this, this beautiful yellow liquid. In the liquid, there's sodium chloride or salt. You float the paper on that, and when the paper's dry, it's a nice, shiny surface. The paper is then floated, after it's dry, on silver nitrate. And when the silver nitrate and the chloride combine, you get photographic paper. What you finally have is a cheap and comparatively easy way of preparing paper for making a photograph using a negative that may have been produced by any number of processes. So a collodion negative could be printed as an albumin print. You would have your negative and you would place it in contact with the sensitized paper and expose it with sunlight. The thing that distinguishes an albumin print from a salted paper print or a platinum print is that the image is suspended on a layer above the paper rather than being embedded in the paper fibers, creating a much more precise and crisp image. This is when we see the rise of the great industrial photographic houses producing popular photographs of tourist sites even then. We're beginning to think if you don't have a photograph of it, you didn't really experience it. It was the beginning of really aggressive mass marketing and mass production of photographs for general consumption. And this was the predominant printing paper from 1850 to about 1890. People like Frith produced photographically illustrated Bibles where he photographed the sites in the 19th century where things that were told about in the Bible were said to have happened. We begin to see how really as early as the 1870s and 80s, the photograph becomes a really important, not just conveyor of knowledge and information, but a shaper of knowledge and information. And it's the album and print that made that possible because it was precise, it was detailed, it was cheap, and it could be mass-produced and distributed easily. 